Hello, geometry students. Mr. Zazik back and better than ever here in Unit 9, Lesson 2. We're continuing our unit on transformations. So our kind of, again, main topic here is transformations. Uh, last time we talked about translations and we talked about a rigid motion. A rigid motion preserves two things, distance and angle measure. And we're going to talk today about reflections. So reflections is kind of our subtopic here. And uh, when we reflect a figure across the line, each point of the figure maps to another point the same distance from the line but on the other side. The orientation of the figure reverses. So as we look at this triangle here, uh, triangle bug, B-U-G, we read it clockwise, you see how... Um, when we flip it over B, if we were to connect B to B prime, that's the same distance. So it's equidistant across U to U prime, that's equidistant across. And what happens is, um, in order to get BUG, we read it clockwise here, but to get B prime, G prime, U prime, uh, we would go the other way. So that's why we say that the orientation uh, reverses. So it is um, not a direct um, transformation. For a reflection across the line M, the line of reflection, if a point A is on line M, then the image of A is itself A prime. And if point B is not on line M, then M is the perpendicular bisector of B, B prime. Okay, so what we're saying here is if we look at this particular picture, if the point is on the line that is the line of reflection, the point isn't going to move. So it's going to stay on that same thing and it will be that point. But if we look at point B and we come over to B prime, this line, the line of reflection, is the perpendicular bisector. And you can see um, with tick marks. So um, when we think about perpendicular bisectors, we, we're going to think about, um, we might be asked to write the equation of a perpendicular bisector. Done that a whole bunch this year. We also might be asked to construct the perpendicular bisector. So the, the line that connects the two points, the pre-image and the image, is the perpendicular bisector. That's the line of reflections. So a couple things about reflections. Uh, a reflection preserves distance. It preserves angle measure. So it is a rigid motion or an isometry. All right, key point here, it is a uh, rigid motion, and a reflection reverses the orientation. So it reverses the orientation. The order of the letters flips around when you reflect through a line. For our notation, we're going to use um, a lowercase r that you see right here. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to use a capital R. Uh, that'll be for a rotation, but for a reflection, we use a lowercase r and then m. So this is a reflection across m that takes point C to C prime. All right, so here is our line m in this, this diagram. Where is C going? C is the pre-image. C prime is the image. All right, so a couple other ones that we have here. A reflection in the line y equals x is a reflection across the line y equals x, a reflection in the x-axis, a reflection across the x-axis, okay? So there's some different ones we're going to do, and we're going to get into these examples here in a, uh, a minute, but the best way to do this is um, plot the points, graph the line of reflection as a dotted line, and then count each of um, the distance away, and then we're going to plot it on the other one. So we'll do some examples. Here are ones that you need to know that it's much simpler if you, um, if you know these as opposed to graphing them. So a reflection in the line y equals x, 
this one is going to switch. That's how I remember that. Uh, a reflection line y equals negative x is going to switch and negate. And then this last one, a reflection in the origin, which is not really a line reflection, that's a point reflection, then we're just going to negate. <clears throat> All right, so we want to remember that when we're graphing y equals a number, that y equals is a horizontal line, and that when you're graphing a number, that x equals is a vertical line. So just to give you a quick um, couple of examples. So like if I, I did this, this might be the line y equals 3, and maybe this would be x equals negative 3. So x equals is a vertical, y equals is a horizontal. And we're going to use uh, a bunch of those in our examples here. Okay, so um, just some vocabulary stuff that we want to make sure, I want to make sure you're familiar with. Uh, the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment connecting a point to its image. Um, and we just saw that in the picture before. Okay, which of the following properties are invariant? Again, invariant means does not change. Okay, so uh, the distance, yes, this is true. The angle measure, yes. The orientation, no, the orientation is reversed under a line reflection. The perimeter, that's going to stay the same. The area, that will stay the same. Collinearity, yes. Parallelism, yes. Perpendicular, yes. All right, is a reflection a direct or an opposite isometry? This one is an opposite isometry, and the reason is because the orientation is reversed. Okay, so a lot of vocabulary, a lot of um, relationships. Let's do some examples. So for three, the first thing it says, graph the point three, four. All right, and so we're going to call this point P. Graph the line y equals 1. Okay, y equals is a horizontal, horizontal line. All right, so we're going to do this as a dashed line right here. Okay, this is the line y equals 1, crosses the y-axis at 1. So what are the coordinates of the reflection in the line y equals 1? graph this point. So here's what we do. We count the distance. It's one, two, oh, I don't want to leave markings, but um, it's one, two, three away. So we're going to come down. Whoops. What's going on? Okay. Uh, computer was being a little weird. Okay. So we're one, two, three away from the line. So we come down one, two, three. And that's going to be our point pre P prime. Um, so what are the coordinates of that? The coordinates are 3, negative 2. So this is going to be P prime is 3, negative 2. And then it says, uh, let's graph P, P prime. So if we just connect that segment or draw it, find the midpoint of that. Well, the midpoint is going to be the point uh, 3, 1. Okay, so the midpoint, notice that it lies on the line of reflection. So, find the slope of P, P prime. Well, that P, P prime has a slope that is undefined. Vertical lines have an undefined slope. Uh, find the slope of y equals 1. The slope of y equals 1 is, the slope is 0, because it's a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. So what we want, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that these two lines are 
perpendicular to each other. So P, P prime, and Y equals 1 are perpendicular. And the line of reflection Y equals 1, notice that we're 1, 2, 3 away from it. So this is going to be congruent to this. So therefore, that line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector. Okay. On one of your assignments, you're going to be asked to find the equation of this um, here. Now, it's pretty easy when it's a, a horizontal line or a vertical line, um, but sometimes it's not going to be. And then we're going to have to use our, uh, like the point slope formula. But it's built off of this idea that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of that line. Okay. So now we're going to do the y-axis. So let's go ahead and graph. Before I graph, I like to write these out uh, in a vertical alignment. So A, B, okay, 0, 1, C is 4, 2. So we're going to be A is negative 3, 4. There's point A. B is uh, 0, 1. And C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Okay. Uh, so that's point C, and this is a triangle, so we're going to connect those. All right, and now it says, let's reflect it in the y-axis. Okay, so the y-axis is actually this um, line right here. Now, one thing to point out, the y-axis, the equation of it is x equals 0. That sometimes confuses people. Um, but remember, x equals our vertical lines. So we want to um, find that over. So I'm just going to count. So a is 1, 2, 3 from the axis. So we're going to come over here, 3, and that'll be a prime, which will be 3, 4. b is right on it. So that actually isn't going to move at all. That'll just stay as 0, 1. And C is 1, 2, 3, 4 from the y-axis. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be C prime. And that would be the point negative 4, 2. And so as you look at that, you might notice that what really changed there. Well, when we reflect in the y-axis, we change the x values. Okay. Now let's do one in the x-axis. So we're going to do the same uh, point here. So we've got, again, A is negative 3, 4. B is 0, 1. C is 4, 2. So negative 3, 4. 0, 1. 4, 2. So we're going to connect these. I'm going to label that A, B, and C. And now we want to reflect this time in the x-axis. Okay, well, this is the x-axis down here. The equation of that is y equals 0. So we're going to count the distance from those points. So A is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to come down here. This would be our A prime. It'd be negative 3, negative 4. B is 1 away, so B prime would be 0, negative 1. And C would come down, it's 2 away from that, so it would be 4, negative 2. And we'll just connect that triangle. And we notice that it's still congruent, it preserves distance, it preserves angle measure. Um, but the orientation is reversed, all right? And that was a reflection in the uh, x-axis. Okay, so each triangle in the diagram is a reflection of another triangle across the given ones. How can you describe triangle 2 by using a reflection rule? Okay, so I think we could say that triangle 2 is a reflection of triangle 4. So... A reflection, let's, let me get my pen, lowercase r in line, which one, k of triangle 4 equals triangle 2. How can we describe triangle 1 using a reflection rule? Well, triangle 1 is a reflection of over the line y equals m, so reflection 
in line M of triangle 3 equals triangle 1. Okay, so just again, always remember that this is the pre image here, and then reflection lowercase r that we have uh, with that. Number seven in the diagram, a reflection in line T of point G equals G. A reflection in line T of H equals um, J. And a reflection in line T of D equals D. Use the properties of reflections to describe how you know that triangle uh, G, H, J is an isosceles triangle. Okay. Well, let's talk about isosceles. We, we need either two congruent sides or two congruent angles. All right. So what we could say here is that GH is going to be congruent to GJ because a line reflection... preserves distance. So therefore, triangle GHJ is isosceles because it has two congruent sides. Okay? So I think that's the last one that we have here for this. There's a lot of practice of different ones. I didn't do uh, many specific examples with different lines and numbers. You got all the pieces here, um, and I think once you start to see it, you'll remember it. One of the things that you are going to want to reference, though, when you're working on your assignment is this kind of the special cases that you have down here okay those become really uh, important to memorize those please ask a question and I'll see you soon <laughs>